YouTube, what is up? It's AD here with US Squads. I hope you're enjoying your day. Today we're talking about ammo shortage 2013. Uh, I'm just going to give you my opinion and my theory about some of these concepts, uh, why and how to fix it. And I've watched a few YouTube videos of people that are uh, pretty passionate about this topic. Uh, some people are really upset about this topic, but I want to talk about it in a positive light and then give you a positive solution to the challenges we have because that's how we have to view it. They're challenges. Uh, we are the result of this ammo shortage and we are also the solution. So let's talk about this for a second. One, ammunition um, on the, the store shelves are, is very, very light. In fact, uh, if you've been out, you've, you've seen that it's very hard to find uh, popular cartridge rounds as far as calibers that are very popular and let's talk about these these specific rounds we right there we have 7.62 by 39 we have some 223 ammunition AK47 uh, SKS's use the 7.62 by 39 and of course the uh, AR variants use 223 or 5.56 um, right in the middle here we have 9 millimeter 380 and 40 Smith and Wesson those are three very popular hand handgun cartridges that are unavailable, very hard to find. And uh, in the middle here is uh, Walmart's 100 round box special um, value pack. Usually it's like 25.95, 12 gauge, seven and a half shot. Um, just you know, clay busters, cheap, cheap, low brass ammunition, good for just going out to you know shooting some rabbits or doing some you know shooting some birds whatever I mean you can use it for various things it's definitely not a self-defense round personally but you know it's good for practice good to hone in your skills with your shotgun and of course up top here and right there on the bottom we have 22 long rifle uh, regular 22 long rifles and then the subsonic 22 long rifle rounds for rifles or pistols depending on what kind of 22 long rifle uh, handgun or rifle you may own so why is there a shortage it's pretty simple uh, there's two reasons I think that there's that there's a lot of pressure actually there's three total reasons but let's talk about the two major reasons I think that there's an ammunition shortage uh, one is that uh, us the consumers are uh, are afraid now don't be offended by me saying that you're a scaredy cat but the consu general consumers are afraid of all the legislation all the things that are happening you're afraid of what's happening and there's nothing wrong with being afraid because it is scary you know these uh, people the lawmakers uh, the leaders of our countries really are overreacting to several national events that are causing them to panic um, although you know removing guns from good citizens is really not the answer we keep talking about how the guns are the uh, the culprits of these mass shootings yet we we don't talk about the mental dysfunction of those perpetrating these acts seems to not come up as much all only thing to talk about is the guns the instruments the inanimate objects that were used in these killings uh, but let's not get into tap tangent but that fear and the legislation and all that stuff is driving some fear into people and what are people doing is that they're doing what I call it they're over buying um, what are they, you know, instead of the one or two boxes of, uh, say, nine millimeter ammunition, uh, they're afraid that they can't get any more, so they're going to buy 10 boxes. Um, you know, when they go out and they buy any ammunition, instead of buying their usual amount, their one or two boxes, they're doubling and tripling the amount that they usually buy in fear that they won't be able to get their hands on it because the market is so dynamic it's a fear driven market it's a fear driven strategy I'm not saying who's responsible for that uh, other than you know the lawmakers I think they're part of the reason why people are afraid and they're buying they're over buying but I'm not saying that it's a bad thing um, it's just natural uh, it, it can be in just a natural reaction to what's happening but it's happening over buying is happening okay that's evident by this by the uh, situation um, as far as the ammo shortage now the second problem is that you know there are people that I call them ammo scalpers and ammo scalpers are basically the guys that are waiting in line every morning uh, when the shipments come in 
and they pretty much gobble up all the ammunition they can get their hands on in hopes to resell it on the secondary market. Uh, very popular for that is the 22 long rifle. Uh, people are really abusing that scalping technique on this and it's even it's definitely seeped into the 223 because no you know a lot of people are picking up ARs right now and they can't find ammunition for them and then of course 9 millimeter 380 auto um, everybody's basically marking these up twice the value so I'll give you an example a brick of blazer 22 long rifles like 23 24 dollars I see them on sale for 40 50 60 dollars on the secondary market and when I talk about secondary market I'm talking about the gun brokers the local classifieds with the ammunition section and that's where those things are being uh, resold at a higher margin um, and you know it's their prerogative I don't hate on those people the ammo scalpers you know it's their life man if they want to be waiting in line and hanging out and being the first in line on shipment day and gobbling up the ammunition that's fine you know that's their lot it's their choice you know it's they're not breaking any laws doing that a lot of people are, are saying really negative things about these people and you know what it's, I got a solution for you guys I can fix this I have a simple solution. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so let's now that we've addressed a few of the challenges, let's address a solution. A solution to fix this. So John Smith can take his sons out shooting 22 long rifle or go out and shoot some, you know, go out rabbit hunting with his kids and able to buy um, you know, some shotgun rounds on a weekend shoot. I mean, that's really what's happening. I am not affected by this whole incident. And there are a lot of us shooters that are prepared for an ammo shortage. Um, I will not have to buy ammunition for another, I don't know, at the rate that I shoot based on what I budget. I can go another, I'm not even going to say how long I can go. I can go for quite a while because I reload. Um, I have the ability to really extend my ammunition sources. Um, but there are a lot of general shooters out there that like to hit the weekend, they go up camping, they want to pick up a little bit of ammunition, they're unable to do that. I'm going to give you an example of how this is really negatively affecting the community. Um, I'll give you an example. I have a nine-year-old boy that just did Hunter's Ed. In fact, here's his Hunter's Ed badge right here. Pretty proud of him. He did really good. And he uh, is nine years old and he did his Hunter's Ed and you know, he uh, qualified with a Ruger 1022 uh, takedown rifle because you have to use a 22 long, ri uh, 22 long rifle to qualify for Hunter's Ed. Well, there were several parents in the class that were stressed out because they were unable to find ammunition for their kids to qualify. And it's not like they needed 500 rounds. All they needed was less than 50 rounds of ammunition to qualify so their kid could qualify for their hunter's education and they were really stressed out. Luckily I was in the class and I was there to help. Um, I provided some ammunition for some people in the class uh, and it really they were really thankful. They were very nice people and you know it really concerned me that you know how many of these young people are going through hunter's ed their parents aren't really firearms people that you know they don't really have a large amount of ammunition. A lot of these parents had to borrow a rifle from a family member or a friend so their kid could qualify to shoot and they had no ammunition. That's how it negatively, negatively affects the general public is the people that want to go out and shoot are unable to go out and shoot and that could be a big problem. Now solutions. Back to the solutions. We're gonna have ammunition manufacturers will provide us ammunition. The federal laws are not going to prohibit any of this common ammunition to be sold to the general public. I assure you of that. In fact, I'm 99.9% .9 that whatever legislation comes out in the next 60 to 90 days will not restrict your rights to buy 223, 7.62 by 39, 9mm 380 auto, 40 Smith & Wesson 22 long rifle, or 12 gauge shotgun shells with 7.5 shot clay busters, okay? It's not going to happen. So don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. The new legislation is not going to affect this ammunition. This is a, in fact, a ATK who pretty much makes most of this ammunition minus PMC. Uh, ATK, uh, it's like their small arms division is like $4.2 billion. Okay. Do you think a billion dollar entity is going to be affected by new laws? No, 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 no. The minute that 
one of the lawmakers says that they're going to ban an ammunition. They're going to send lobbyists in to rectify the situation. I promise you this ammunition will not be banned. Don't be afraid. Okay. Now, you know, do what you got to do. If you got to buy ammunition, buy as much ammunition as you want. But you guys that overbuy ammunition eventually will sell your ammunition. I've seen it happen a million times. So you buy all this ammunition. You may sell one of your pistols or guns. And then you'll sit there and you'll look at your ammunition and go, geez, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to sell it. It happens all the time. So if you overbuy, it's eventually going to hit the market anyway. It's fine. It's your prerogative. It, it goes full circle, I promise you. You know, if you need, to, you know, you're sitting there staring at three, four hundred dollars of ammunition, just sitting there. You don't even have the gun that fires that ammunition. I promise you, you're going to resell that ammunition. Seen and seen it happen a million times. All right, let's talk about the ammo scalpers, the guys that are scalping ammunition, making a buck. Which is, you know, hey, I'm not hating on those people, but we can stop it. We can put them out of business really easy. And why? How do you put them out of business? You stop buying from them. If everybody takes a 30 to 60 day break on panic buying and just being afraid that you won't be able to get this ammunition anytime soon, just stop. Take a break. Everybody sit on their hands and take a break. And it will come back. Okay? What will happen is the ammunition, the stock, the shell stocks will start kind of filling up. And then all the scalpers are going to disappear once their their bread once their bread and butter stops selling, they'll stop poaching the product. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? It's not a negative thing. I don't hate on the people that are overbuying. I don't hate on anybody who's you know scalping bullets. You know you, you do you do what you do. It's legal. It's not you know you might think it's unethical, but in the end, it's it's supply and demand. They spent the money. They spent the time to wait in the lines. But we don't have to buy from them. You don't have to pay $40, $50 a box for 22 ammunition. And 22 ammunition, it, it's, it's a silly round. It's like not a great defensive round. It's not the ultimate survival round. I mean, it's like plinking and small game hunting. And when I say small game, I mean rabbits and squirrels, okay? not going to hunt anything with the 22 long rifle. Now people might disagree with me on that, but I, you know, I'll take a uh a, a 223 rifle, 300 blackout rifle, 308 rifle any day of the week over a 22 long rifle. I do love my 22 long rifle uh firearms. I have plenty of them, but it's not going to be my primary go-to firearm. So, with that being said, 13 minutes of just ultimate rambling and talking. I hope you guys found this uh, concept useful. Uh, comments below. Subscribe if you like my content. Thank you for watching. We can make a change. We can make a difference. Please support your organizations that support your Second Amendment rights. Uh, we have the right to shoot our firearms. We have the right, as law-abiding citizens, we have the right to own our firearms. And you know, some people, some groups believe that we do not have those rights, or those rights are antiquated and they can pretty much kiss my ass okay those who you know peer the people like the Piers Morgan and uh, some of the you know some of the legislative people that run Chicago New York uh, you guys can all kiss my ass that's all I have to say and I'll say it really nicely kiss my ass okay pro rights pro amendment support your second amendment support your NRA Thanks for watching YouTube. You guys have a great day. Thank you.